Hey guys, this is HyperObject. We're going to do something a little different today. I'm going to actually talk through one of my videos. Uh, the reason I'm doing it is if you are in the market for a Volcamix and uh, you haven't bought one yet, um, you're probably doing your research and trying to figure out exactly what every control on here does. And that's actually not very easy to figure out uh, from Korg's manual or from blog post articles about it. So uh, that's why I want to give you a chance to listen to what things sound through it and then do a slightly more detailed uh, dive into what's actually happening to the sound when you turn this little knob here back and forth. So we'll start out with what I thought these knobs were going to do. Some reputable sites have as a description for this product um, that this is a high pass, low pass filter, this little knob here. And, and that's really not what it is. Um, so when I got this and hooked it up, uh, I expected something that sounded like my old DJ mixer here. If you're running white noise through the high pass sweep, it sounds like this. And then the low pass sweep sounds like this. So let's listen to what the Volcamix sweep sounds like. Okay, so we've got white noise running through. Let's just listen. If I turn the knob all the way down. So it's at the farthest position down now. I turn it all the way back up. Back at neutral. All the way back up to the top. And I'm just going to do a sweep from bottom to top one more time. It's kind of relaxing, right? It sounds like a white noise machine or waves crashing or something like that. So it's pretty obvious that what's happening here is not exactly a filter sweep. So what we're going to do is dive into that a little bit more and look at the spectrum analyzer to see what exactly is happening EQ wise uh, to make that sound that's a little bit different than a filter sweep. So here's the spectrum analyzer showing the output of the Volcamix with white noise going in. Um, this is with the knob at a neutral position. One thing I want to mention is that there's not actually an indentation right at the neutral position on this knob. So you kind of have to eyeball what you think is a 12 o'clock position and then say that's neutral. But the first thing you'll notice looking at the spectrum analyzer is this isn't what you expect white noise to look like. Uh, when I first fired this setup up, I was sure I had somehow set it up wrong because the white noise is just a horizontal line when you look at the spectrum analyzer. So to make sure I set this up properly, I tried uh, two different sources of white noise. I tried two different mixers and I tried two different interfaces to bring it back uh, into my DAW, which is Reaper. And um, in all of those situations, white noise would come back as a horizontal line and white noise coming through the Volca mix, uh, even at a neutral position like this or a little bit to the right to the left is really not a flat line. It's this shape you see here. So what exactly is that shape? Um, it looks like there's some EQ being applied to signals as they come in in neutral position. Specifically, we got at what I would call a flat position or a neutral position, we have this narrow cut around 300 hertz. And then we have kind of a shelf boost that starts at maybe three kilohertz and then it kind of boosts everything up above there. Um, I'll come back to this later as far as what I think it's doing and why it would be applied, but even if you can't hear the difference between just straight white noise, which sounds like this, this is straight white noise, this is the output of the Volcamix. Even if you can't hear the difference, you can tell from looking at the um, spectrum analyzer that something is being done to the, to the signal. So let's just look at how this reacts as we sweep down and sweep back up. And here it is at the max position. So again, um, you could hear the difference earlier, but looking at it, it's really clear this is not just a filter sweep. Um, we would expect, you know, if it was a high pass, low pass filter, that those frequencies would be totally eliminated, but that's not really happening. Um, let's go through that a little more slowly and then look at what's happening at each step. So if I'm going from the 12 o'clock position on this knob down to nine o'clock, we've got 
this narrow cut coming in. I'm going to try and stop it where this cut is at its deepest. Yeah, it's like right here. So that's maybe three kilohertz. Um, notice that's not really a sweep. It's just this cut that comes in. And as I turn the knob farther to, what is that, counterclockwise, as I turn the knob farther counterclockwise, that cut gets deeper and it also moves farther up. It moves farther into the higher frequencies. When we're all the way to the left, all the way at about the seven o'clock position, functionally it's kind of like this really smooth low pass filter. It's not harsh at all, but basically we got this really smooth low pass filter on the signal right now. And so as we bring it back up, and you can hear those high frequencies coming back in with me not really moving the knob back all that much. You know, here's nine o'clock and you've got those high frequencies back. I'm gonna take it back to neutral, and here we are back at neutral. And now let's see what we what we get when we move clockwise. So as we turn it to the right, we see a couple things happen. There's looks like a shelf EQ below 300 hertz. And you can kind of look at that and see everything below that 300 hertz split is dropping as I move the knob farther to the right. So here we're all the way at the right. The other thing that's happening is that everything above 300 hertz seems to be rising. So as I'm moving this up and down, if you look back at that, here we are back in neutral. If you look back at that 300 hertz range, which is cut when we're at neutral, even when you turn it all the way up, that really doesn't get that much lower. We're still letting those low frequencies through. They're just pretty quiet. Again, here's a sweep all the way from the bottom. At the lowest setting, you have that kind of smooth low pass filter. And here's all the way at the top. where you're still letting those low frequencies through. So as far as how you actually use this, um, it's a performance mixer, so you might be expecting that, you know, as you're playing on this, you're gonna be sweeping dramatically back and forth, but it, it doesn't really seem set up for that. Um, this almost seems like it's intended to be used as kind of a set and forget, where when you're preparing your set, um, You've got three instruments going in, and you're kind of dialing in, well, I want this to sit in this place in the mix, so I'm going to, you know, cut the upper mids so that this goes in a different part of the mix. Or I'm going to cut the lows on this instrument, so I'm going to turn the knob all the way up here. And then once you decide what your settings are going to be on those three knobs, you just leave them there for your performance. You never touch them again. Um, that kind of makes sense. I could see why it would be designed in that way. And then, yeah, you're just never touching these knobs again as you play. Um, the interesting thing about that is there's no way to cut the mids, really. Uh, and I'm actually going to go back to my other input here, which is the Volca FM. So I'm going to leave this spectrum analyzer up here so you can see this is a pretty loud mid-range instrument. If I'm setting up a song that's got this instrument in it and I want to move that to the back of the mix by maybe cutting the mids, I can't actually do that with this control. There's really no way to cut the mids. I mean, I understand this is a really small mixer, so you can't fit a ton of knobs on here, um, but that's just something I wish I could do with this control. That said, if you're going to design a mixer with only one knob to do EQ uh, on three different instruments, uh, this is... This is a pretty cool way to set up, actually. Uh, in fact, I'd say I'm impressed with how effective this is at mixing Volca specifically, because I want to go back to um, something I mentioned earlier about why is the neutral position on this mixer set up so it's got this weird cut um, at 300 hertz and in a kind of a shelf boost of the higher ranges. Um, my pet theory is that it's deliberately set up this way because it's kind of making the instrument more bright and less muddy. Um, if you've ever spent a bunch of time mixing Volcas together and then trying to EQ it later, you're probably going to do something actually pretty similar to this yourself, where you're taking a little cut 
and you know the lower mids to try and take some of the mud out especially if you're using those original three volkas you know the keys the bass and the beats they just tend to get pretty muddy in the mix so i actually kind of like having that cut to the lower mids and a little boost uh, to the treble frequencies to just make it sound clearer um, that said, it's important to be aware of that uh, when you're using this either to perform or to record with, because if you're trying to put together a good mix, it's important that you know what your controls are doing. Um, the manual for the Volca mix is not very descriptive in this regard at all. Here's one sentence uh, that's their entire description about the low high cut knobs. These allow you to filter out low or high frequencies for each audio channel. That's all it says. That is technically correct, but it's not very helpful if you are trying to put together a good track or a good set with this. Um, I would expect to see some more detail there. So um, with that in mind, hopefully if you don't have a Volca mix, watching this and, and seeing how white noise gets shaped by this knob helps you figure out you know, what your EQ options are. 